We know the feeling deep in our bones. It's like an intuition or an instinct, a feeling that is sometimes hard to describe. Something that is universal. It's that feeling we get when we are surrounded and awe-inspired by nature. But we are learning now it is more than just a feeling. The concept of connecting with nature is nothing new. But join me, Alex Smythe, as we examine the science behind Shinrin Yoku and the wealth of benefits waiting to be unlocked. This is forest bathing, rooted in science. This street in the heart of Tokyo's electronics district gets so busy that they have to close out the traffic. In Japan, in the early 80s, during the techno boom, the Japanese government recognized the stresses of the modern world. With most of the population now living in overcrowded concrete cities, the national parks proposed a program called Shinrin Yoku. Shinrin is Japanese immune forest. And uh, Yoku means the bus. So Shinrin Yoku means breathing the forest atmosphere or taking the forest through our five senses. That's Dr. Ching Li. He literally wrote the book on forest bathing. And he says the program started for one reason. They know the forest may reduce stress, but there are no data, just a concept, just a common sense. Forest bathing is not an exercise of hiking or jogging. It's just being nature, connecting with nature by all five senses. Just a slow walk, slow walk, with the five senses, it's very important. It wasn't until 2004 when the Japanese government began to conduct experiments to prove what people already knew. Time spent immersed in nature is good for us. Dr. Lee was the first medical doctor in Japan to join this research. So some people study first, some people study medicine. I study forest medicine to find the beneficial effects of forest environment. Those beneficial effects of the forest were further documented in 2007. Dr. Lee published a study where he explored the effect of forest bathing on human immune function, specifically NK cell activity. NK, or natural killer cells, help our bodies fight against viral infections and tumors. Taking participants for trips in the forests, he found the experience boosted NK cells as well as anti-cancer proteins. He also tested the effects of time spent in cities, finding near opposite results. So how does it work? Trees produce something called phytoncides. These are the tree's way of fighting off infections and diseases. We, in turn, breathe them in while we're amongst the trees and reap the benefits. I found that the forest bathing can reduce your blood pressure, reduce your heart rate, reduce your stress hormone, increase your uh, immune function. Since Dr. Lee's groundbreaking work was published, there have been numerous studies from a variety of disciplines to support and build on his research. Studies have shown statistically significant reductions in blood pressure cortisol, the body's main stress hormone, heart rate, as well as decreases in the incidence of diabetes, all major markers of physical and mental health. Dr. Nevin Harper, associate professor at the University of Victoria, has focused his area of study on the benefits of the outdoors on not just mental health, but therapy itself. Nature-based therapy is one area that I work with closely and locally here as well. And that's essentially trying to convince our uh, colleagues in social work, psychology, counseling, and other therapeutic forms to simply take their practice outdoors. So nearby nature, the park that's across the street from the health center, the you know forested trail that's along a creek beside the schoolyard, the school counselor could take their students out there rather than sitting in an office needed to eat. Now we often, often get blamed for saying things that are a little bit magical or uh, universal claims like nature is good, nature is healing, and yet nature can be really harsh too. 
it doesn't apply to all people. It doesn't apply to all practitioners either. But when we do look at the research, there's a lot of physiological research that shows that humans as a species of species of the world are actually healthier in the environment that supports them. And the anecdotal evidence also backs up the research. Getting outside definitely is good for the soul. <laughs> Andrea Nelson loves the outdoors and tries to get a daily dose of nature in her life. Whether hiking, camping, or canoeing, she leaves the wilderness feeling recharged. I don't know the science behind it, but it's definitely therapeutic in, you know, for mental health, physical health, um, emotionally. So I definitely feel just better and more focused with my day with whatever is going on. Who wouldn't want to experience that in their life? Hearing Dr. Lee, Dr. Harper, and Andrea speak about the positives of spending time in nature, I found I was still skeptical. So I felt it was important to experience forest bathing firsthand to find out if it's more than just good vibrations. Forest bathing rooted in science will return. This is forest bathing rooted in science. As we learned before the break, Andrea Nelson is an avid hiker with a strong connection to nature. I just love being outside in the outdoors. That's where I just feel the most alive and excited. And it's obviously beautiful. And because of my injury and accident and having a difficult time getting outdoors, I think it's just like accentuated that, that since I can do this now and I'm able to go on hikes, that I'm taking full advantage of that. Andrea, who uses forearm crutches on the trails, also finds the time in nature a welcome change from the demands of her life on Canada's para kayak team. I think part of the recreational side of, of getting outside is a good contrast to the high performance athlete side where there's a lot of stresses and, and goals you're trying to meet. Whereas going for a walk in nature, there isn't a goal and it's just about going for a walk in nature, whatever that ends up being. So I think that's the important side of it, like the leisurely stroll. Knowing how much she gets from the natural world, I thought Andrea would be the perfect person to accompany me on a guided forest bathing experience at the Ken Reed Conservation Area in Kawartha Lakes, Ontario. And she jumped at the opportunity. I'm just hoping to experience a, a different side of walking in nature. Usually I'm going for a faster paced walk and maybe not taking in all of my surroundings. So kind of having that more meditative side of going for a walk in nature. Excited to get started, Andrea and I met up with our guide for the day, Christy Virgo from Quartha Conservation in the Cedar Forest. I've guided a lot of people through the forest in a lot of different ways, you know, as, whether it's a naturalist or canoe trips and camping trips and that sort of thing. This is by far my most favorite way of bringing people into the forest. It's, it's a way of witnessing people's experience to the forest and everybody has a separate experience. So it's beautiful to, to watch that, to watch what the forest can do for folks. It's, that's the kind of stuff that feeds my soul. I say, you know, at the beginning of a forest therapy session, I'm not a therapist, right? It's I'm a forest therapy guide. So I'm the guide. The forest is the therapist. I simply open the door. And that really is my role as a guide is to offer suggestions as to how people might interact with the forest in a different way. And by doing so, they get to know the forest better, but they also get to know themselves better. And likewise, they get to know the people that they love better. When I spoke with Dr. Lee, he emphasized the importance of engaging all five senses individually and in unison. So he asked Christy what we hope to accomplish by using touch, sight, taste, smell, and hearing while in the forest. As we explore our senses, you slowly start to drop out of your head and start to explore, oh my goodness, how bright the colors are, or you know how sharp something smells, or, 
And when you do that, you're no longer focusing on what time you got to pick the kids up from school and, you know, taking mom to the bank and all of those kinds of things. And so you can drop out of that sort of cerebral world and drop into the sensory world. And just for that, you know, two and a half hours of, of exploring your senses that way, can, the, the benefits are huge. And that's where the rest and digest comes in. And that's where, you know, you sort of, you just sort of hang out and, and all of those happy hormones can start to be produced. Welcome to Ken Reed. Welcome to Forest Therapy. And the community in Kawartha Lakes have embraced the practice, especially since the pandemic hit. Sessions are regularly fully booked. Another reason it is growing in popularity is the simplicity of the experience. So after a 20 minute walk in the forest, your immune system will increase by up to 54%. It's accessible on multiple levels, right? It's accessible financially. It, you know, get yourself to a park and go for a walk. But it's also accessible from the standpoint that we don't move a lot. You know, over a two and a half, three hour walk, we might go a kilometer, maybe a kilometer and a half. Um, and people are always shocked. It's like, it took me like three minutes to, to walk out of something that took me three hours to walk into. So regardless of, you know, whether you're fit, whether you have mobility issues, we've had folks come out here on, in wheelchairs and do forest bathing that way. You know, the, the ability to get up and close to a, to a tree, you know, there's, there's not a whole lot of things that'll stand in your way. You will get out of it exactly what you put into it. Try it with an open heart. Try it with, you know, a sense of wonder. It's, it's an amazing experience, but you really have to try it. You can't explain it. With those final words, the three of us made our way to a meadow at the edge of the forest, so Andrea and I could experience it ourselves. After walking us through the mechanics of the session, Christy offered us the first invitation to engage one of our five senses. So now I just invite everyone to just close their eyes, take a couple of deep breaths, shake off some of the road dust of the different things that we had to do in order to get here today. Take a couple of deep breaths. And now with your eyes closed, I invite you to call your attention to the sense of smell. And when an animal goes through the forest, they'll take short sniffs and turn their head from side to side. Just notice if you can pick up any of the aromas that happen to be hanging in the air today. From there, we went on to engage all of our senses through a series of invitations, returning regularly to council to share after each experience, typically prompted by Christy howling like a coyote. all the while slowly making our way deeper into the woods. So for this invitation, I want you to imagine when you look at the trees and you, you look up into the canopies and you see all the branches sort of intermingling with each other. And if you can imagine that that's exactly what's happening under your feet, right? All those roots are going out, they're touching each other, they're connecting to each other. And so imagine if you could send a message through that web of roots to anywhere in the world, any message to anywhere in the world, imagine what that would be. And for this invitation, just wander off into the forest and see if you can find the tree that's calling to you. Once you find that tree and you decide to sit down with it, you're gonna have about 15, 20 minutes to do this. So get yourself comfortable. And I invite you to send that message out. And once you're finished, I invite you to sit for just a little bit longer and see if you get a response, okay? We then came together to share our experience like we've been doing throughout the day. This time, I went first. Welcome back. Just looking at the tree itself, I, I noticed it had to a very strong base, but then it kind of breaks off into two almost identical trees that grow in simultaneous height. And so I kind of thought about certain questions I've, I've had to myself in, in life, whether it's, you know, life choices, the right paths, am I 
doing the right thing? Should I be doing something different? And so I want to take away from the time spent with the tree since each tree seems to be healthy, each one seems to be almost identical, that the choice I, I made in the path that I'm on or not on, they're equal. And so it, there wasn't a right or wrong choice that I made. You know, the first thing when I settled down next to my tree, like I had been looking up at them swaying and I was trying to feel if I could feel it swaying from the very bottom, which you could on the, on the smaller ones. It's definitely very slight, so I had to be paying a lot of attention to it, but trees look so sturdy from eye level when we're on the ground. You usually only see them sway up there, so it was kind of neat to be able to feel like a slight sway closer to the base. I was just trying to send out some positive messages of love and hopefully those can spread to places that need it, which everyone needs love. After one more invitation, where we offered out thanks to the forest, including a hug for a tree, Christy wrapped up the session and gave us the opportunity to reflect on our experience. I definitely haven't spent this much time in one spot fully immersed in my surroundings. I definitely try and pay attention when I'm out in the forest, but not quite in the same way. So I just want to say thanks and thanks to the forest as well. I've spent a lot of time in nature growing up and, and exploring the wilderness, but I never really took the time to sit and, and just collect myself in nature and tune out everything else. So. I think I'm going to take away a new appreciation for the world around me and hopefully see, start to see things in a, a different light. So thank you for opening that door for me. Thank you for your gratitude. It's the, the forest did the work. I just simply said, come on out. So I hope you'll go out again. I hope you'll take some of these invitations and repeat them on your own. And more than anything, I hope that you'll go out into the forest and hug a tree. Thanks. Forest bathing, rooted in science, will return. You're watching Forest Bathing, rooted in science. Before the break, I got to experience forest bathing firsthand and learn how Kawartha Conservation is providing a program so anyone can try it for themselves. This movement is growing across the country and para-kayaker Andrea Nelson told me about how trails in her hometown of Markham, Ontario are promoting forest bathing. So naturally, I wanted to learn more. Exploring the forest bathing trails of Markham, I was curious why the city decided to adopt the practice and implement it as part of their parks. So I met up with Tanya Lewenberg, public realm coordinator with the city of Markham at Two Good Pond to find out. Shinrin-yoku is part of the Park Renaissance program and that's a program where we try to make enhancements to existing parks that are older than 10 years. And the other things that we're trying to do is some more adult, adult engagement and the Shinrin-yoku paths were researched to have really positive effect on mental health and so we wanted to have something in our park system that could address that as well. So we worked with GIFT, that's the Global Institute for Forest Therapy, and they helped us to develop all of the wording, all of the text for all of the science and sort of introducing the concept of Shinrin-yoku. And they also go into a bit of information about our uh, river valley. So there's some conservation in the signage and there's also sort of the invitations to listen to the sounds of nature and uh, sort of tune in and connect with nature. And we know from speaking with Andrea Nelson that the signage has helped to raise awareness of the practice in the parks. Currently, four trails in Markham have Shimon Yoku invitations along their paths. As we walked the trails of Two Good Pond, Tanya and I came across one of those invitations. Keeping your eyes closed and engage your senses. Do you notice the sunlight or a breeze against your skin? Listen to the sounds of flowing water birds calling, the breeze playing with the leaves, or a chipmunk scampering across the earth. In many ways, the invitation Tanya read is reminiscent of a guided meditation session conducted by a therapist. 
which made me think of something Dr. Nevin Harper brought up when discussing the benefits of outdoor therapy. He's found the forest can be an effective partner in therapy practices. One of the central themes in our, our last book was to try to get people to consider nature as a co-therapist and to just be in kinship with nature means that we don't need one hour with a counselor each week. We might spend one hour with a counselor that week, but we could also spend a couple hours each day with that other person that is now a part of in our relationship, in kinship with, which is nature, because we chose a, a local park that's right near the house. And so whether it's an adult or a child that's, that's in need for counseling, they can then use that as a local resource for times when they can't see the counselor or they don't have the supports and resources that they need. It's easy to imagine how the invitations in the parks could enhance the forest's ability to act as a co-therapist. And in addition, as Dr. Harper pointed out, conducting sessions in nature is a great way to eliminate stigma around therapy. If it's a young person, they either come alone or they come with their parent, they have to walk into a structure, into a building that has a sign on the door that clearly indicates what they're there for. And the stigma and the potential um, negative feelings around that alone can be completely eliminated if, say, I make my appointment with my client at the park and we're just simply two people walking in a park environment. And as we've learned, there is also the added health benefits from spending time in nature. It does have restorative and therapeutic properties that just don't show up indoors. It doesn't mean that indoor therapy doesn't work. It doesn't mean that those you can't be less stressed when you're talking to your counselor indoors. It's just that when you compare the two, there's this natural occurrence happening outdoors that is pretty hard to recreate indoors. It might be hard to recreate, but Dr. Lee says it's not impossible. There are a couple simple things you can do to bring the forest into your home or office space. In a recent study, Dr. Lee proved that we can get the effects of the tree's phytoncides by diffusing essential oils like cypress or cedar. Then, engage your visual senses by adding some plants to your space, and even simply by watching videos of nature. During this journey of discovery, I've learned about the role our environment plays in our lives, and the science that shows the impact it can have. So it is vital to ensure that in the future, we protect our forests for the health of the environment and ourselves. Because if people know the beneficial effect of the forest building, people will protect the forest. The point of no return is approaching quickly. And if we don't start protecting our forests now, it may soon be too late. So when you can, put down the phone, get outside and reconnect with our natural roots. Nature's calling, will you answer? Host, Alex Smythe. Producer, Ted Cooper. Associate producers, Matthew McGurk and Alex Smythe. Videographer and editor, Matthew McGurk. Additional camera, Jay Kemp. Field audio, Mike Monson. Media accessibility specialist, Simone Cupid. Audio post, Mark Phoenix. Senior producer, Michelle Dudas. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020 Accessible Media, Inc.